I went into this video expecting it to be based on the Bible, but it actually brought up some interesting points. Stand to Reason has another video about homosexuality that is based more on the Bible, but I can't really debunk that without saying the Bible shouldn't be your source of knowledge over and over again. So without further ado, responding to, responding to same-sex marriage. Today we're going to look at a controversial policy issue. As Christians, we believe it's our responsibility to stay informed about our faith and understand how our views translate into not only our personal lives, but also our culture and government. One of the most debated topics in our country is same-sex marriage, and we think there's a respectful, loving, and logical way to address the subject. So that's what we're going to do. Before delving in, there are a few things we need to consider. First is the language we use. We are addressing same-sex marriage, not gay marriage. The government isn't concerned with sexual preference, it cares about gender. Where marriage is defined as a man and a woman, there is no ban on same-sex marriage. There's simply no legal provision for it. Secondly, we are raising principled objections to same-sex marriage. This is in no way related to bigotry, narrow-mindedness, or arrogance. It doesn't have to do with intolerance, whether or not we think adopting same-sex marriage into our culture is a positive policy decision. This sounds good so far. There is no ban on same-sex marriage, however, since marriage has legal implications, there are reasons to add provisions for same-sex couples to marriage laws. In my opinion, marriage laws should be expanded a whole lot. For example, a couple who have lived in the same house for three years, have a kid, and have no intentions of leaving each other, but haven't declared that they are married, should have all the bonuses of being married, but they don't. On the other hand, a couple who just met three days ago and immediately got married doesn't seem like as strong of a bond as the previous couple, but they do get the bonuses of being married. That doesn't seem very fair to anyone, does it? Now that we've discussed our approach, we can talk about the heart of the issue, marriage. Marriage is not defined, it's described. It's a fixed feature of the natural order, not invented by people. Marriage is a social construct, as much as I hate that word. Sexual reproduction and heterosexual mating may be a natural part of the world, but marriage is defined by humans. Sure, there are some animals who stay with their mate until death do they part, but other creatures don't care. In fact, some creatures have homosexual intercourse, and if you want an example, wait until my dogs are done fighting and dominance will be asserted. It is debatable whether or not these creatures have a long-term relationship, but then again, their brains aren't built for complex social interaction. I have heard a few times that evolution is wrong because homosexuality exists. On the surface, this makes sense, but homosexuality, just like morality, isn't a direct consequence of evolution. Sure, some basic altruism is great, but most of our moral understanding is a side effect of being a social creature with a huge brain. Evolution provided the starting point and a big brain, and we did the rest. There are some interesting studies about homosexuality and epigenetics, but I've gotten myself into a huge tangent, so let's just continue. Marriage relationships produce the next generation. In fact, Families that consist of a father and a mother are the building blocks of our society. Agreed. Homosexual couples can't have children. However, the foster care system is overflowing, and I don't see why we should stop homosexual couples from adopting. So what does that mean for same-sex couples? Well, it means that changing language or laws doesn't change the nature of marriage. Same-sex marriage is a modern contradiction. Except that marriage is designed by humans, which is obvious by the many people who aren't happy in two-person heterosexual relationships. Some people are homosexual, some are bisexual, some are polygamous. Polygamy often gets a bad rap because of the abuse of polygamous cults, which often involve pedophilia. But polygamy is not inherently bad. I mean, look at the Bible. Plenty of those. There are many arguments for and against same-sex marriages. It's our goal to give others reasons before rules. So, we thought we'd take a closer look at a few major arguments. Different kinds of relationships serve different purposes, and the government has no obligation to give every kind of relationship the same entitlements. Heterosexual marriages have a unique role in society, which is to sustain civilization through procreation. This is why the government automatically grants related benefits like inheritance rights to a married man and a woman. It's not unfair to treat different kinds of relationships differently. All right, granted, but in that case, heterosexual people get an unfair advantage over homosexuals. Homosexuals aren't attracted to the opposite sex, so it can be argued that they're being discriminated against by being forced to have a heterosexual marriage to get the benefits. The circumstances are not the same. Skin color is morally trivial, while there is an enormous difference between a man and a woman. Race has no bearing on marriage, but sex is fundamental. Plus, same-sex marriage is not an attempt to include those wrongly disenfranchised from an existing institution but to abolish that institution and substitute a radically different one under the same name. Agreed. Skin color and biological gender are different. However, marriage is not simply based on having children. Otherwise, couples who don't intend to have children wouldn't get the legal benefits. It's based on a strong bond, often referred to as love, which homosexual couples feel towards people of the same sex. 
Spousal rights and marital traditions have changed. However, marriage has always been between males and females because of the unique function they perform in society. Marriage can't be a social construction because cultures emerge when humans reproduce. This means that cultures cannot be the constructors of the marriages that make culture possible in the first place. Bricks make the building, not the building of the bricks. Culture does not construct marriage. Marriage and family construct culture. No, heterosexual sex constructs culture, and culture constructs marriage. You can be married but not have kids, and you can have kids and not be married. Sex and marriage are separate things. Some marriages are barren, by choice or by circumstance. Even so, the natural marriage and procreation connection is not nullified because in some cases children are not intended or even possible. The state protects conjugal marriage because of its institutional importance to culture. Well, there's another thing. What about people who cannot have children for medical reasons? Why should they get the same marriage benefits? If you say, they get them because it's discrimination to not give them benefits since they're disabled, then why do homosexuals, whose homosexuality is out of their control, not get the benefits? This sentiment reflects a common misconception. That is, that same-sex marriage will secure new liberties for homosexuals. Same-sex couples can express love, have weddings, share home ownership, have sex, commingle property, receive inheritance, and spend their lives together. Same-sex marriage grants no new freedom and restricts no liberty. Three seconds of Googling tells me this is not the case. If homosexual couples can have all the legal benefits of being married, then why isn't that called marriage? It isn't, because if they can't get married, they can't have all the benefits. A few of these benefits include being able to get health insurance from your spouse's employer, being able to file your taxes together, making medical decisions for your spouse, custodial rights to children and shared property, or in this case, adopted children. Sure, some of the many benefits of marriage that I found on Wikipedia can be obtained in other ways, but if you get all the same benefits and your relationship acts the same as a heterosexual marriage, then why don't you just call that a marriage? What does all this mean? By equating same-sex unions with heterosexual unions, it changes culture at its core. And with that change, two things rapidly follow. First, anyone continuing to make the gender distinctions dictated by nature will come into conflict with a law dictated by men. Agreed. If you want to stop that, get rid of the concept of a marriage. Second, the boundaries of marriage will continue to expand as the state continues to tinker. Yeah, it does. Is that a problem? As our culture equates same-sex and heterosexual marriage more and more, we are ignoring the very roots of the world we have today. Adoption legislation, rights of association, religious practices, freedom of speech, and issues of conscience will all suffer harm. Ah, so you think that homosexual couples shouldn't adopt. Why? If they're in a stable and loving relationship, why shouldn't they be allowed to adopt? Especially with the overflowing of the foster care system. Marriage, family, and parenthood will continue to be redefined. To sum things up, same-sex marriage is not about civil rights. It actually boils down to validation and social approval. It's an attempt to push people to accommodate a lifestyle they might find morally wrong. Today, homosexuality is broadly tolerated in this country, though it isn't universally accepted. Homosexuals have the liberty to live as they choose without fear of backlash. Redefining marriage is contrary to nature, socially destructive, and will be used to infringe on the religious conscience of those who disagree. We're not intolerant, and it's not bigotry. We have rational reasons based on nature that cross history, cultures, and religions. Favoring a live and let live attitude toward a lifestyle doesn't justify redefining an institution that has served humanity well since the beginning of time. Well, slavery has existed since the beginning of time. Should we let that be? How about dictatorships or even war? These have all existed since the beginning of time and have served us well. War, in particular, made us literally shoot for the stars. Why would we get rid of these things, or at least change them? They've done us so much good. Hmm. Subscribe on YouTube and Minds. Like on YouTube and Minds, I guess. Comment on YouTube and Minds. Follow me on Twitter. Is that it? Yeah. Thanks for watching. Till next time, I hope you enjoyed.